This is Starla, your tutor, and today we're going to talk about color. When you describe color to somebody, you have to pretend that they're on the phone and can't see the stone that you're actually trying to describe. So in order to describe color, we talk about it in three different uh, segments. The first segment we talk about is the hue. The second segment we talk about is the tone. And the third segment is the uh, saturation or intensity of the stone. White light that we are in right now is colorless, but we know it's made up of every color of the rainbow because when light passes like through a prism, when the light exits it, exits, it breaks up into its component rainbow colors. So we know that that white light came in, but because of the bending, it broke up into the rainbow colors. So we know that right now I am surrounded by every color there is. So why is this stone red? This stone is red because the light energy, all the wavelengths entered the stone and the stone absorbed some of the wavelengths and transmitted the other wavelengths or the residual wavelengths, which we see as the color red. So it's all about absorption of light and transmission of light that our eye sees and our brain interprets as color. And the eye and the brain part is important because not everybody sees color the same way, right? People are colorblind. And what my eye would see as red, their eye might see as green. So there is the light, the energy, the absorption, the transmission, the visual, and the interpretation that gives us color. So first of all, we talk about hue. And hue is the actual primary color that we see. So when you look at this stone, you see red. This stone has absorbed every color and is only transmitting those wavelengths that are red. The reason they do that is because there's elements within the stone. There's eight elements called the transitional elements that can be in any of the stones and they cause this stone to absorb colors and transmit others. If they didn't have those little transitional elements in there, the stone would be colorless. And colorless means that all the light that entered it transmitted through it and exited it and we see it as colorlessness. If the stone absorbed all the wavelengths and transmitted none, then we would see the stone as black. So we talk about hue. Hue is the primary color and in this case it's red but we're going to transition over to green. This stone is green. The primary color is green. This is yellowish green. So we say the primary tone second, and then we say the modifying or secondary color first. So this is yellowish green, this is green, and then if I put this up, which is the color of often the Zambian emeralds, you can see that it's very strongly bluish green. So this secondary color is important because it gives us a better visual of what the stone looks like. In the gemstone world, you want the stone to be as pure a color as possible. That's how you get maximum value. You want an emerald that doesn't really have a modifier, a secondary tone, uh, tone to it or color to it. You want it to be pure green. But in reality, we get the secondary color to them. So hue is the actual body color and the modifying secondary color. So when you were to describe a stone, you'd say, this is yellowish green. Another great example is, you can see that this stone is pink, but what is its modifying color? Its modifying color is purple. This is a purplish pink stone. You can get orangish pink. So the secondary color is important. So when you're doing your assignments, make sure you give the secondary color of the gemstone that you're describing, because if somebody was on the phone, they would need that to know what to send to you. The second factor in uh, describing the color is tone. And tone is how dark or how light the stone is. Zero would be very, very light, and that means it's colorless. And then we slowly get darker and darker and darker down the scale to we get light, we get medium, and we get dark, and then we get very dark. And very dark um, 
Sometimes a stone is so dark you have a really hard time seeing its body color. So you have to transmit a nice strong beam through the stone in order to actually see what its body color is. So it could be green but is very, very, very dark green. So it's really, really hard to see its body color. And you'll notice that with your tourmaline crystals. A lot of people will call them black. But in reality, if you can get light to go through the stone, you'll notice that it is actually dark green. And that's very common for black diamonds as well. Black diamonds have a very greenish color to them if you can get any light to transmit through them. So tone is from light to dark. And in the value of gemstones, you want your stone to be as dark as possible without blackness. Once blackness comes to the stone, it starts to decrease the value. So as the stone gets darker and darker, the price goes up and up. And then once there's that blackness, then the price starts to go down. If there's too much blackness in the stone, we often get what we call extinction. And you can see that these, there's these dark areas on the side. In the ideal world, you don't want to have your stone have lots of extinction because it's blackness and it, it, it impacts the value of the stone. So when you look at the stone, notice, is it dark, medium dark, medium light, very dark? And then how much extinction does it have? If there's lots of areas of extinction, then the stone is actually getting very dark or very, very dark. So extinction is important. The third factor affecting value is vividness and it we people call it many things in the gem world we often say how saturated is the color and it can be weak moderate or strongly saturated and it's actually the money maker of the world it's what will cause a stone to sit in your showcase for years or to sell immediately and it goes you know from vivid to dull and you can see that this is a very vivid green color and this is a little bit duller green color and the reason is is that they have what we would consider a mask over the stone browns and blacks or grays and browns tend to dampen or mute the color of the stone and the more it mutes it the lower the value is so if you look at this beautiful booklet here you can see that these colors are quite vivid, you know, moderately strong, vivid, and then they, they get a little bit lighter and paler and weaker. If I take this mask and put it over it, you can see how it starts to mute the saturation of the stone, and all of a sudden that starts to decrease the value because it has just a touch of gray that makes the vibrancy drop down. So that's the saturation and it's the hardest one for people to uh, learn. Uh, basically, it's the curbside appeal. When you look at it, is it bright? Is it beautiful? Is it lively? Is it talking to you? That's the saturation. That's, that's what really makes you love it. It's like that rich royal velvet color and you go, oh man, this is gorgeous. So saturation is what does that. So, hue, tone, and saturation. So you can see, hue, these are all yellowish green. These are all pretty much a true green color. And then you can see here, it starts to get to bluish green. So if I were to choose this, say this one, I'd say it's pretty strongly bluish green color. It is medium to medium dark in tone and it's moderately strongly saturated. Whereas if I take this one, I'd say, oh, okay, we've got a yellowish green stone for sure, and it's medium in color, or in tone, but see how the saturation is missing because it's got this brown cast to it, and this brownishness dampens the color. So that's how you describe color, hue, tone, and saturation. Uh, the tone, light to dark, again, pretty straightforward. If you can't see through the stone, it's very, very dark. So, color grading these stones, 
is actually pretty straightforward. And the reason you have to be able to say it verbally or to write it down is because in our world, there is no standard system that everybody is using today to describe color. So I can't call somebody up on the, stone, uh, on the phone and say, hey, have you got a, a blue-green 6-4 or, uh, you know, something like that. They don't do it. Their 